Good morning. Good morning. All right. It's seven, uh, seven. <laughs> it's September 5th and I'm so excited to bring on Lynette today. Um, I'm just going to get into it because I don't have much else to talk about right now. Oh, oh, other than the new program coming out. Well, yes. Also pumpkin spice shakeology came out. So grab that up if it's not sold out already. Um, but the new program coming out, um, very soon in a couple of weeks is a running program and it's the very first type of program that Beachbody has ever done and really that anybody's ever done. So when I got started on my fitness journey years ago, I actually thought I would get into running and, um, but I had no clue what I was doing. So I joined like a, a community group in our neighbor, in our area that taught you how to run a 5k and you met, met up and you like learned how to slowly get into running and then at the end you did a 5k and it literally is what got me started into working out again and then from there I bounced right into Beachbody and started doing programs with Beachbody right that being said nobody's really ever done a video program for running and it sounds weird but Beachbody has totally gotten it taken care of so one of the things about my journey with running is after I did a 5k, I decided, Oh, I need to run more, right. To get better results. I need to run more. And so I signed up for a half marathon. And when I did that, I did train for it. And when I did it, I killed my back. I mean, I really, I was in pain for years afterwards. And I know looking back that the reason for that happening was because I didn't cross train. I didn't take care of my core. I didn't cross train, which is so, so important. So what Beachbody did is they partnered up. Well, they already have a super trainer who is um, a championship runner. She has all kinds of awards with running. She's also does our um, Spanish speaking program called, mm, I'm, I'm going to screw it up. I think it's Mes de Mas, uh, but you look it up because that's probably very wrong. And she's amazing at lifting and, and um, cardio as well. So they put her, they talk to her and they put together this program. So it's running and cross training on your days off of running, right? And so the cross training piece, when you're inside your home, you have your video, but the running piece, they have audio um, downloads and you put it in your ears and you do the running portion outside. And so it's so cool. I cannot wait for this program to come up. I highly recommend everybody test it out because it's in the perfect timing. It's going to be in the fall, right? And that we're doing it. And we can end up doing a full virtual 5k right? I think around Thanksgiving time. So I'll give you more information as it gets updated, but it's a really cool thing. And they already have a sizzle like video. So if you want the video, let me know, I'll give you the video and you can start sharing it and asking people if they're interested. So that's my update for this week. I'm very excited about that program. Okay. So we have Lynette on here and she's going to share with us. She's been working with us for a while. I absolutely love her. She's a light into the group. She's so much fun. Um, to be honest, like Lynette and I went like met each other a long time ago when we were in college, you know, before college, we met each other at work, right? We met in college. We met in college, but we yeah. worked at the same place. I, I think I got you the job there. Oh, that's, maybe that's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we went to school together at the sales in night classes. And, um, so we, we've been friends since then. Uh, she lives pretty far away, so we don't talk to each other all the time. But, uh, <laughs> when I started doing Beachbody, she joined us and she's been with us a couple of times throughout that time frame, And she really kicked it up a notch recently with her nutrition and really kind of found out a routine that works really well for her. And I'm really excited because Lynette has been doing great in the last couple of years. She's been working out like full time, like getting into routines. If she, just like all of us, if she ever fell off, she came back, which is a huge piece to everybody's journey. Being able to be like, all right, it's time to come back, right? That is the biggest piece. And I always say for you to feel this, like that you live this healthy lifestyle, that time frame of us, like 
falling off and coming back on, the shorter it becomes, the the faster we can be back into that lifestyle. And the more we know we are living that lifestyle, everybody falls off. Even somebody who's like super healthy, whatever, they're going to get into a rut or whatever. Um, but that time frame of us coming back, the shorter it is, the, the better it is, right? And so she has been just a great example of that. And so I'm so super proud of her. Anyway, I'll let you speak, Lynette, but I do want to show your pictures. So sure. let's do a drum roll. This is Lynette from January, you said? Yeah. This is Lynette's pictures from January till now. I'm so proud of her. Yay. And Lynette, um, how much is the weight loss between these two pictures? Do you know? 25 pounds. 25 pounds. So from January till now, 25. And you said... A bulk of that weight loss was between May and now, right? Yeah. So the bulk of my weight loss, um, really, it was mid-May until now. Yeah. Cool. Let me let me put you on the spotlight. <laughs> Hold on a second. Do you want me to, to go back and share my full story or where do you want me to jump in? Yeah, so we've already had Lynette on here in the past, right? So we have a good piece of your story that we can actually refer people back to. So I want you to share more of what's going on this year. Where, um, ha I guess I should say, what reignited you, right? If you lost 25 pounds between May and now, how did you start kicking it up a notch? Like what made you... What was your journey? How did you get back into it? What even made you get back into it? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So Go ahead. to back up a little bit, in October timeframe, I had jumped back in with Beach Body and I did a morning meltdown 100. And I also had went to Asia during that time frame. I only worked out, I was there for two weeks. I worked out like maybe three times, the one being in the Singapore airport. But I... I did finish it. I felt really accomplished because I never had completed something that was a hundred days. And so for me, that felt really fulfilling, but I also, I was just really exercising and I was doing it more for stress relief. I have, um, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome. And so that's a hormonal and also a metabolic disorder. And I had really just had given up hope that I could lose weight and I was just trying to be as healthy as I could. In reality, I was using it as an excuse and continuing to eat unhealthy, but I didn't realize that. And I, it was just like, I was exercising to feel good. So I really enjoyed morning meltdown 100. I did lose some inches, but I didn't lose serious weight. And the reason was I wasn't focused on nutrition. So then fast forwarding, I really, when the monthly mindset membership came out, I started listening to that. I, I wasn't following 2B mindset at that point, but I thought, wow, this is really interesting. And I thought, you know what? I should really go all in because before my son was born four years ago, I had dropped about 20 pounds doing 21 day fix and keto. But what happened with keto is that then I got pregnant, right? And then I wanted all these carbs literally meat and potatoes every day. And I just ate everything in sight that was carbohydrate and that continued post-pregnancy. And so there I was in the doctor's office last year and he said, your cholesterol is through the roof. Well, it's because of, I did keto and I couldn't stop like putting butter and fat and everything in all my meals. I'm like, fat's good for you. It, and it, it is if you're eating healthy fat, but like in proper moderation. So I, I really thought, you know what, I'm going to try this to be mindset. And if I can at least drop down 20 pounds, I know this program is legit. And so I have actually been able to do that and uh, lost 10 more pounds, um, like total for that. And so I, I really, I'm, I really have gone all in, but to like back up really what changed me was, okay, I started dabbling and trying to learn the plated method. And I had this moment of clarity in May that I was like, oh my gosh, we've been in this pandemic for several months now. And I just assumed in the summertime, it was going to go magically go away and everything was going to get better. And I really, we, we were talking about my day job that 
we're probably not going back to work until next year. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be sitting at home for, you know, another six plus months. And I, I thought, okay, I can either use this as an opportunity to continue what I was saying, like helping the local economy <laughs> get fast food all the time, which wasn't helping anyone, wasn't helping my, um, wasn't helping my bank account, was not helping my waistline, or I could take this as an opportunity to learn how to actually cook and eat healthier. And so I did that. And during the process, I also had taken a food sensitivity test that confirmed that I was sensitive to a lot of foods that I basically knew I shouldn't have been eating. Like they, they're on PCOS, like dairy, is very bad, gluten, a lot of grains. So I took the test. I, I had it sitting in my cupboard for about three months because I was like, oh, COVID, it's not going to get processed anyway. I took it and then it actually came back really fast. I ended up being sensitive to a lot of foods. And so I started testing it with and tracking it in the 2B Mindset Tracker. And I realized that I really was sensitive to those foods. So once I had accepted reality and I started cutting those foods out, doing 2B and then also with muscle burns fat, I've been able to start dropping some serious weight because of that. And so, you know, it really, also during that May timeframe, I do need to point out that I also read Ileana's book. Um, you can drop it. I really just have a cover right now. because I <laughs> <laughs> Green screen is loving it. <laughs> You can drop it because this is not my real background. Um, <laughs> you can drop it like that changed me so much, the mindset. And it made me realize I was using my polycystic ovarian syndrome as a reason. I was saying to myself, I can't lose weight. And in the book, she says, you can lose weight. You want to lose weight. Your body wants you to lose weight and you love it. And so once I changed my mindset, and I learned more about emotional eating and what are different things I could do to help me with emotional eating and realizing that in the moment, that doesn't really solve anything, right? Okay, it might mute my feelings in the moment, but it's not solving anything long-term and it's making me feel more unhealthy actually long-term. So her book was also a major um, part of my transformation of my mindset and continuing to listen to the monthly mindset and also autumns. I, I also, even though I don't do 21 day fix, I still listen to autumns. Is it monthly fix or monthly fixing? Monthly, monthly fix. Yeah. Because I love autumn is so like straight that I just, I love it. Like if you're putting in 70% of the work, don't expect a hundred percent of the results. And I was like, damn girl, that, I mean, that's some tough loving, but it's true, right? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. putting in half the work and then expecting, why isn't this program working? So for me, I think it really, it, it's been a journey in where I was finally mentally at a place that I could let things in. And I really became a student and more willing. My mindset changed. I continue to study. I, you know, I'm like obsessed with uh, to be mindset and the monthly a mindset membership. And that really helps me. I learn a lot of tips from that. And I also tap into the Facebook community and I ask questions if I don't know. Um, and everyone is super supportive. So I'm a big advocate, whatever program you are doing, you definitely also want to connect in with the monthly ongoing membership because that will make a huge difference. And also if you're doing 2B Mindset, recommend reading Ileana's book. If you're doing the Fixate, um, Autumn just came out with a book also that I'm reading. I, I'm about a page, I think like in the 90s, where she's talking about your why. And that's the other thing. What is your why? And my why was never good enough because it was never enough to really stop my excuses. So my why became my cholesterol, I'm going to have to go on cholesterol medicine at 38 years old if I don't get my stuff together. That's like that. I also, I am um, predisposed to diabetes because of PCOS. If I continue down this train, I have like diabetes is a serious, 
serious illness. I, you know, so for me, it was about an excuse my mouth, but getting my shit together was my why. So I could be there for my kids when I'm older. And so through this journey, I'm only halfway to where I want to be with my weight loss. But I, at 25 pounds weight loss, I have so much more energy with, to spend time with my kids. I'm able to be more fully present with them. And it feels amazing. And this is all because I, I was finally willing to do what was being told to me. And I actually <laughs> became a student of it, which I know is, is crazy, but you know, sometimes you go in and you just, I was like, when I first read the to be mindset, I, when I got it, I think it was a year and a half ago, I think, um, two Decembers ago. And I thought, oh, the two bunnies, like, I, I can't drink that much water. I'm not going to weigh myself tracking. That's obsessive. You know, and I, I just, I wrote it off. And until I was really at the point that it's like, you know, this, this works. This woman lost and has maintained a hundred pound weight loss. She knows what she's talking about. I should probably start listening to her. And so I think that's where, you know, that it's taken time, but I, I think that's where like my mindset has changed from fixed. I can't lose weight. I have PCOS to a growth mindset. You know what? I don't know how to eat healthy, but I can learn how to eat healthy. And I have recipes. I have a whole community. I have the Better Together community. I have the monthly um, membership community and start leaning into them. And that, that's been a huge difference for me. All right. End of story. Let's uh, wrap this up and send it to everybody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you said so much in that, that like, I couldn't take enough notes. So, um, your journey is, is something that I feel like everybody should hear because it's so important. Um, but I want to go back real quick and just say, guys, as a coach, we need to lean into the system as much as possible because like, I didn't do anything for Lynette. That sounds ridiculous, but I, I really didn't. Like Lynette, I provided the group, you know, I invited her constantly, but other than that, she went through the system on her own. She decided when it was time for her to, to dive in. She, she discovered, I, I just pointed to the things, right? Oh, like go to that, 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 go to that. She decided when it was time to do, she bought the book, you know, um, to be mine or drop, you can drop you can drop it. Um, she, she decided all of these things. So really like we as coaches, a lot of people are afraid to get into coaching because they're like, well, how could I help somebody else? You know what I mean? I'm over here struggling right now with my weight. <laughs> I'm now asking Lena. I'm like, Hey, yo, so what did you do? <laughs> right. So, but the thing is that's not our, our job is not to be the professional. Our job is to point them to the professionals. We have so many amazing people and we have so many awesome systems to help people with like, like she was saying, the mentor, the monthly mindset, the, um, or the mind membership mindset, <laughs> membership, membership mindset and monthly fix. Let's just say the nutrition monthly videos. Okay. So <laughs> we have those, the books, the videos that are the lessons, like the course, the original course, we have the workouts. We have all of these things, right? She did MM 100. And I think that's because I invited her to do MM 100. Right. So I didn't teach her anything, nothing. Like I really didn't. She took advantage of the tools that we have. So as a coach, we have to remember that. And if you're even thinking about coaching, you don't have to be a professional. You're not teaching anything. You just need to guide people into those things, right? And it's up to them if they want to do it or not. So that's something really important to remember. Um, you brought up keto and Jesse and I were literally just talking about this the other day because um, a family member had made this like really delicious, super cheesy, fatty meal, right? And we talked about how the fact that with keto, and I'm not knocking it, a lot of people love it and they do really great. But for us, um, we realized that it kind of gets you into these habits of eating very high caloric foods, which is okay if you're not eating another food group taking up those calories. Does that make sense? And then when you get into those habits and you get to any kind of like 
uh, bringing any kind of uh, carb or starchy food back in, now you're way over your calorie deficit. So keep that in mind. That happens a lot to a lot of people. Like they'll lose a lot of weight and then they, and then they just kind of get back into life and then they gain even more back. So that does happen to a lot of people. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not knocking keto. It definitely is great for the people who love it, but it is something that I've seen in a lot of people, including ourselves. Okay. So something to keep an, an ear out for. But anyway, um, the other thing that I took from what you said, and I, and just by in interviewing other people and listening to them, um, food sensitivities, they're all over the place. A lot of people have them, but what I found is the people who do the best when they find out the information. So you can, you can get information from anything. You could be going like to, you could go really dive in and go to like nutrition classes, get your certification. You can really dive in. But here's the thing in any of this, that's all information. So is the sensitivity test information. The more information you have may be good, but if you're not implementing it, it doesn't matter. It makes you more frustrated. So the more you learn, if you're not learning how to implement it, then the more frustrated you get. And when it comes to to be mindset and learning how to track your food ahead of time and getting into the habit of tracking your food, then I see people who take sensitivity tests get the best results because they're like, oh, well, I already have confidence in tracking. I know I can do that. And so testing and tracking to a normal person who hasn't been doing it sounds incredibly overwhelming. But if you've been doing to be mindset and you're used to doing this and you're like, oh, I've been there. I know, I know how to track. Then it is an easier way to implement what you just got knowledge on. Does that make sense? So I, I do notice that not with just Lynette, but with some other people as well. Um, I think we also interviewed Jen recently and she said the same thing when it came to um, testing and tracking and how to be mindset helped with that. Okay. One more thing. And then we're going to chat a little bit more, but the thing I took away from most, the thing I take away from most people and something I learned recently while I was trying to learn Spanish, which I still am, is when you go to learn a new language or a new system or whatever, right? I find that if you submerge yourself in it, you will do better, right? So how do I, like, let's use Spanish as an example. You could take Spanish lessons and do a little bit every day, right? Or take a semester here, a semester there, or you could move to a Spanish speaking country and you're going to learn Spanish way <laughs> faster by living in a Spanish speaking country than if you were just taking lessons online, right? Well, if you use that kind of analogy for a way of a language of eating, a language or a, of a new lifestyle, like a healthy lifestyle, the more you submerge yourself in it, the faster it's going to be. You're going to be speaking the way that people speak. You're going to be thinking the way people think when they live a life, healthy lifestyle, right? We, some of us have a lot of baggage that we have to redo, a lot of like mental mindset stuff that we have to redo. And it's easier to do it if you submerge yourself. So what Lynette was saying is she said, I, I'm reading the books. I'm listening to the mindset stuff. I'm listening to the, the monthly information coming out. I did the courses. I, I listened to those. I'm, I'm implementing as I do it. And the more I'm like submerging myself into the language and the information, the, um, the better I'm doing. Does that make sense? So um, something else to think about, especially when the information is about implementing, right? So I know I just said before, if you just keep educating yourself, it's going to be overwhelming. But if the information you're bringing in is about implementing and how to implement, which is what the mindset stuff is, the, I mean, the monthly stuff is, then you're going to seem to do better. Does that make sense? Okay. So sorry about all that. Okay. So let's, let's do um, real quick, Lynette, tell me specifically, like, give me some suggestions and ideas of what you are doing now throughout a day of eating versus what you think you used to be doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Not give me an example. <laughs> That's okay. Give me an example of what a day in the life of Lynette looks like with your meals. Okay, sure. Yeah, I get up in the morning, I will take my Energize while I'm meditating, and then I work out, and I'm doing um, 
muscle burns fat. So most days I'm chugging immediately recover afterwards because I know I'm going to be sore and you need to take that within the first 20 minutes. After that then for breakfast, I always do um, vanilla or chocolate vegan Shakeology and I'll put spinach in it. I will put half a banana in it and also PB2 and um, focus energy to help me in the morning because I'm not a coffee person. And then for, I usually, I stop snacking. I used to always snack during the day, but what I realized is then I go upstairs, you know, so I'm, because I'm working at home. So I go upstairs to here my office and then I work until about like around noon. And then I go down and for lunch, it's, I'm trying to like, I, I, I meal prep for the week. So I use a lot of fixate recipes actually. So stuffed pepper mix is one of them. I don't like the actual pepper. So we just like took the pepper <laughs> out and cut more peppers and put it in. So I'll have that with, you know, like I'll have that. So then there's um, quinoa in it. There's beans in there. There's corn. So I know I'm getting carbohydrates. I know I'm also getting my meat. And then I'll add vegetables that I had prepped earlier in the week. So it's a pretty substantial meal. And if I, if I want to get decadent, I'll like throw some goat cheese in because that I'm not sensitive to. I'm like, ooh. And <laughs> <laughs> depending, most days I, I don't snack. But yesterday, like for instance, I kayaked with my daughter and I had waited. I didn't work out until later. So I did do a beach body bar at that point in time. So if I snack, it's usually a beach body bar just because it's, it's quick, it's easy, it's a balanced protein and carbohydrate. So uh, I might throw, or I might just do some veggies um, and a, a protein, like a slice or two of lean ham if I'm really hungry. And then for dinner, I, it's, I'm so basic when it comes to dinner that I, I usually will do like spaghetti squash. I'll do a whole half of a spaghetti squash. I will put my vegan cheese on it now. So grateful that we live in this day and age where there's vegan cheese that I can eat. And I'll do like round round or pulled pork or something over it. Or if I want, if I feel like I want potatoes, I will do turnips and I'll air fry them. And then I'll just dump some meat and um, if I want cheese or whatever accessory I want on there, I'll do that. Or yet yeah, last night I just had a bunch of veggies and put uh, I put halibut on top of it, and that it was amazing. So I know like someone had asked me recently, don't you ever get sick of all the vegetables you're eating? And honestly, what I learned from Ileana is it's how you prepare them, and that's where the accessories come in. And if you're doing it right, that's where they taste amazing. Mm -hmm. How do you um, stay committed to dinner and done? Did, was that ever a problem for you before? You know what? Yeah. It, actually, that's so funny you say that because before I would always like, I would just keep eating into the night and that, that did take some time. So um, one of Ileana's videos she talked about, and this sounds extreme, but I had to do that first. She says that, you know, if her husband, when, the, when they were both married, if her husband came home late and he was eating or he was snacking at night, she would tell him that she's going upstairs and, you know, was going to do her own thing so she wouldn't be tempted. And so at the very beginning, if my kids had popcorn or something, I would just kind of, I would... I would still stay there, but I would stay away from the popcorn so I couldn't mindlessly be eating it. And then over time, it just became easier. But what I would also do is there are some really awesome teas that I would, um, they're like vanilla bean tea that I would, I would drink. So then I had my hands occupied and it's not, I'm not mindlessly going for the food. And so over time, it, that has become a habit and it's gotten easier. I think also chugging all the water all day helps too. <laughs> that, that took me time too, because at first I was like, this is an insane amount of water, but now I'm getting about 150 ounces a day plus. Wow. 
That's correct. That's incredible. That's awesome. So, wow, those are really good takeaways. Um, one other thing, when you, you said you used to snack a lot and it kind of sounds like you kind of gave the answer, but I'm not sure. Um, you said you used to snack a lot, but now you don't. Is that also because you walk away? Like you're away from the kitchen. You said you go upstairs to work. Do you just make sure that you're not bringing anything up with you and you're kind of staying away from that kitchen during that time frame? Yeah, I do the out of sight, out of mind. So if I know it's something that I will want. So for instance, like if there's goodies that my kids have, you know, or my husband, I ask them to put it downstairs in our downstairs refrigerator. So if it's a cake or something, I, I don't want to be tempted or if it's I'll put it away because that does, that makes that a lot easier. If I don't see it, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that has helped me a lot over the time. I'm now okay. If I see it, I don't need it. But at the beginning and the first few months that, that was pretty key. And that's where Ileana gives so many good tips through. If you go through the videos again, she gives so many great tips that if we actually follow them, it, it makes it so easy to actually do it, but it's a matter of following it, which I yeah. never did before. It's so true. She gives it, and even on her, on her posts on Facebook, Instagram, like everywhere you go, she's giving so much content and so many great ideas that you're like, Oh, and then you forget about it. So you just, you have to be like either writing it down or, or take one thing a week and be like, I'm going to try that one thing this week. I do find that that comes a lot easier for me if I'm like working on one habit at a time, like if it's dinner and done, that's the thing I'm focusing on until I feel like I've completed it. Right. Like, okay, I'm not working so hard at that. Let's add another thing. Right. Um, maybe it's snacking during the day. Maybe it's um, replacing coffee with a tea or what have you. Um, I do find that the bevies, I don't know if you've tried them yet, but that works out well too in between meals because it gives you something like to fill your belly and to taste in between meals. I like, I like that too. I like the, the taste of the, the lemon, um, oops, sorry, the lemon, um, tea berry. I know some people like the pomegranate too. I'm just not a fan. Uh, <laughs> I think th those are all awesome, awesome suggestions. Can you hear me? Okay. Right now. Okay. Yeah. It's like making weird noises. So I am so proud of you, Lynette, and I am so grateful for you to come on here to share. I think it's really huge to, to, for us to share when things are going great and when they're not going great, or if we like we were struggling and then how we overcame it, because it's so real. It's so real. We are all dealing with this, especially now people, you know, stress is high. Everything is high right now. Um, emotional eating could be high right now, but like you said, that's, we can't use this situation that we're in as an excuse to continue on this path. And I think your story of overcoming that mindset piece around PCOS and around um, other things, like other people might not have PCS, but they might have something else that is also mm -hmm. making that, maybe it's hormonal, different hormonal changes. Maybe it's, um, um, for me, I used to use breastfeeding a lot as like, well, I need to eat more, right? Um, which I did, but I wouldn't do it right. And I would like, you know, Jesse said here, he's nervous to go back into the office. So all of these things, like these situations that we may be in that we didn't choose, right? Um, we need to be able to overcome them and know that we can overcome them. They're not excuses. They're just little things that like little hurdles that we have to work over. And I, and thank you so much for sharing that. It's so key to, um, you know, our actions plus our mindset is what equals results. And we have to put in the right actions and have the right mindset to equal those results. And I think you're a great example of that right now. So thank you so much, Lynette. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> what is Jesse's like texting all this stuff on here? Lunches, free food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes his willpower is true. So like Lynette said, one other thing, just to go off of what Jesse's saying, she said at first, some of these things at first, they were hard. At first she had to do something a little different to get herself into a routine and then it became easier, right? So you might have to 
do something extreme. You might have to do something extreme to be able to break yourself of a bad habit and then be able to ease your way back into it. Right. That, and that's, if you call, if you call walking away from food extreme, <laughs> I don't think it's extreme, but it did help you with your pet, bad habit and it helped, um, other people might consider it extreme. I don't know, but you might just have to do something a very different than what you were already doing. Thank you so much, Lynette. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, guys, make sure you join us every week. Let me, um, Put this back on here. Join us every week if you want the text so that you can be reminded of the coffee talks. Then um, message me or comment below in wherever I post this, and I'll get you the number to make sure that you're getting the reminders. All right, that's it. Have a great weekend. Thanks again, Lynette. Bye. Bye.